Happy Cinco de Mayo. Well, almost. It's tomorrow. But this morning, we're going to get a head start with Chef Patty Hinich. She was a public policy expert for a Latin American think tank until just a few years ago when she switched careers and launched the popular cooking show, Patty's Mexican Table on PBS. She's now the official chef at the Mexican Cultural Institute in Washington, and she has just released her first cookbook. Chef Patty Hinich is here with a Cinco de Mayo feast this morning. It looks <laughs> and smells spectacular. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for I'm coming. so looking forward to it. And congratulations on the cookbook. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm very happy about it after four years working on it. Wow. So I tell am us, delighted. Tell us what you brought us today. Okay. Because it looks fantastic. So we have a combination of okay. food from uh, different regions from Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, we have the chilorio, which is northern Mexican food, like really cowboy Mexican food. Okay. Um, the chilorio, you can make it with it's pork. pork right? You can make it with chicken too. Mm -hmm. And how it's made is you cook the pork or the chicken covered in orange juice. It'll mm. render all wow. of its fat. You cook it down until it starts browning. Mm. And then the meat is almost falling apart. And then you finish it off with an ancho chili sauce. Ancho chilies aren't spicy at all. Okay. Okay. And then so you get this sort of sloppy joe kind of a feeling. You guys, that's exactly what you need to I'm do. I'm doing so the right thing. Yes. Make it like a burrito. Yeah. We're, exactly. We're going to roll oh. it as if it was a burrito. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, and then we have the frijoles charros, yep. which is also food from the Mexican north. Wow. And it has roasted tomatoes and mm. onion and jalapenos and bacon and chorizo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can take it as much as crazy as you want. We have chunky guacamole, which is mm. my favorite way of eating guacamole, which is chunky. Mm. Right. Um, you want to dress it up with pomegranate seeds. And, you know, the Mexican avocados, you really can get them year round. Right. And um, people, Nancy knows a lot about avocados. Yeah. Yes. I, I grew up amid avocados in Hawaii. My parents still tend to some avocado trees. And so tell people how to pick the right avocado when they know it's right. So you have to just go out to the store and don't be shy. Grab the avocado right. and if the people at the store are looking at you say I'm just testing it because you have to <laughs> feel it. You have to just hold it, give it a, a light squeeze. If right. it's giving in, it's ready for you. If it's really hard like a baseball, Bring it home. But Put it in a paper bag, right? Exactly. <laughs> in a sunny area in your kitchen or until mm -hmm. it softens. But if when you grab it, your fingers go all the way in, just leave it at the store. Okay. Patty, you, you grew up in Mexico. I did. In a family of cooks, right? Yes. But you weren't you, you weren't really a cook in the beginning. No, no, no. I was the was her I was the ugly duckling, the the, oh. the one that was you know, I have three sisters who are older than me mm -hmm. who are stunning and lovely and gorgeous. We're very close. And they were we're all into the food world since we, since we were very little, but I was the one who was labeled as the intellectual, and the since I was very young, one. the studios one, and I wanted to be an academic mm -hmm. and a policy analyst. And, and you actually got your master's degree in Latin American studies at Georgetown. From Georgetown. We're throwing that in as a fellow Hoya. Exactly. Yeah, high five. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then did wait, you realize you, had you live in Washington too. So high five. <laughs> <laughs> And so then when did you realize, okay, I'm not following my dream, I need to change course? So it was, you know, I zigzagged a lot because mm. I did venture into the food world many times. When I first moved with my husband to Texas, when we just got married, yeah. I worked as an assistant for a cooking show for oh. Chef Stephen Piles. But I was doing sort of the studios, the academic side, the research, the, and it was just for a little while. And... Then when we moved to Washington, D.C., I went to school again, worked at the think tank, and my husband kept insisting, Patty, oh, that's when I cooked at the Blair House. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you look beautiful there. But, um, yeah, oh, that, I was in Yucatan there <laughs> doing some market research. That's a terrible photo, I'm so, sorry. So your yeah. husband, sorry, let me get back to the story. <laughs> so your husband said, why don't you do what you love? He insisted and insisted, and I was very skeptical. You know, I married a liberal Mexican, and he, <laughs> he said, He wanted you back in the kitchen. Why aren't you in the kitchen? And I thought, maybe he just doesn't want me to work, doesn't want me right. to professionally evolve. I am not going in the kitchen. Well, we're glad you did. We've yeah. got to get you to sign our, our dish yes. for us and tell us who you'd want to share this meal with. Uh, well, you know, I have three boys, mm -hmm. um, oh, five, oh. seven, and 13. Wow. Um, and... 
I would love to share this meal with them 20 years from now. Uh, that's Aww. a great idea. I want them to come back home. That's I don't want them sweet. to go to begin with. Well, great. happy Cinco de Mayo. Happy Thank Cinco de Mayo you. indeed. This is Chef great. Patty Hinich, thank you so much. And for more on Patty Hinich and the dish, head to our website at cbsnews.com slash cbs this morning.